the more I read about Peloton, I'm wondering if my four thousand dollar treadmill is going to turn into a boat anchor. Oh. <laughs> it's heavy enough. The worst part is you see, and I, I could be wrong. Put an asterisk on this, but you see the commercials, and, and they say, or I don't know if it's on an ad, but it says you know forty bucks a month for to like buy a bike. I think if you finance it. But then they don't tell you that the subscription's another forty dollars a month, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking like, why do I need to spend forty bucks a month to like stare at the screen on my Peloton? It just seems. I'm sure for the bike it's different on the treadmill. You know, maybe you don't need the subscription for it, but you don't really feel like you get six hundred bucks a year worth of content. If that makes any sense. Um, mm. I just feel like they have peaked. How does it work on the treadmill? Do they do they give you like guided running? I've never done it. If you've seen me, I don't run real far. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not built for speed. We'll leave it at that, right? It's I think I'm great at a lot of things in life. Running I'm not winning any marathons. Let's just be honest. Um, I, I usually put it on, uh, I'm listening to like a podcast. I'm not even looking at the goddamn screen. I, I spent the money on the Peloton because it, it felt like the best built treadmill that I could get as a consumer. Yeah. Or, you know, I actually, in my home gym, I have, it's all commercial equipment, like the hammer strength stuff. Um, I do some heavy lifting. I I don't have a Bowflex. Um, there's there's no Nordic track around here. But as far as treadmill goes, it's you know everyone I know that ever bought a treadmill from like Dick Sporting Goods complains about it nonstop. It's always broke. Oh hell, Dennis, we had that one in the office, and we had an office gym, and that was a three or four thousand dollar commercial treadmill. How many times did you call the guy out to repair it? I mean, many times. Did he ever <laughs> fix it? Not exactly. We did pay for the service, but it did not get fixed. And I, that's why I didn't want to buy a treadmill. I'm like, I don't want to deal with this. And I saw the Peloton one. I'm thinking, this thing looks and feels like it's probably going to last. Or it's so modular that I can contact Peloton and actually get somebody to come fix the damn thing. But... uh I didn't really buy it for the classes. I just, I just thought when that subscription hits for like forty bucks, I'm like, for what? Mm-hmm. I kind of get the spin class thing, but <clears throat> that treadmill didn't make any sense. But, uh, you know, I, I use a subscription uh, through Apple that gives me all these exercises as well. So it's, it's pretty similar. I would assume it's pretty similar to what you can get from the subscription base with Peloton where you know you can do a treadmill class you can do you know rowing and meditation and yoga whatever whatever else they have my thing is is that i really don't as you mentioned using like you know six hundred dollars worth of the content on there i i usually if i feel like i have a good workout if i find a class that i enjoy that i feel like i got a good workout with i'm gonna stick with that for a while like i don't really ever see myself browsing through all these different trainers and different classes and try anything like new out that way. If I find something, I, I tend to stick with it. I, I mean, that's, that's just me, but I, I feel like that would be a lot of people as well. What do you do, Kane? Uh, that's exactly me. I, I, there's one trainer that I like on the Peloton and I don't, and other than that, I'll do like a Peloton has this thing where you can just ride through scenery and I'll do that a lot, but it's... yeah, look, yeah. No, go ahead. No, I, I don't, like Dennis said, I don't browse that often. And now that you think, now that you're bringing up the cost of it, I'm thinking, do I even use that much uh, content? You're, you're absolutely right. You said the scenery thing. I don't want to cut you off. But that's what, if I do watch the screen, which I don't, I'm usually walking and then I got the screen on and it's like I'm walking through the Grand Canyon or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I'm in like Berlin, like these... It, those are cool, I guess, but it's not interactive or nothing. But I'm doing that, and I'm on my like looking at my cell phone screen at the same time. So 
I'm almost giving myself motion sickness because I'm walking and looking at <laughs> different. It's terrible. What's cool is because then I, I kind of get motion sickness and then I don't feel like eating, which really aids in the weight loss. <laughs> so, <laughs> but again, it's just like, am I paying 40 bucks a month to walk through the Grand Canyon? I would pay 40 bucks a month if they would. It's like a 30 inch screen in front of you. It's like an iMac in, or bigger but you can't load a web browser or YouTube. I, I would pay 40 bucks a month if you would just give me the damn ability to load a browser up so I could watch a podcast or a TEDx. Um, hell, I'll just watch other people working out while I'm walking on the treadmill. I don't care. <laughs> but they won't let you do that. And I'm just like, man, 600 bucks a year. Do they charge you 40 a month, Kane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, all right, same thing no matter what device you get. Um, I just like... Is they worth it? I, I guess if you're one of those people that wants that soul cycle and you're trying to do a live class and you're trying to get on the leaderboard and all that stuff, then maybe it's worth it. But at the end of the day, I got a massive like JBL, one of those boom boxes next to me, and I'd be just as happy throwing on an Armin Van Buren, a state of trance episode, and I'm good to go. Like I don't I don't need the the teacher with the playing the music and i get the, i don't need that James, are you telling us that you don't dim the lights and put candles everywhere <laughs> so i ought to be honest in my gym area right i have those like led light bulbs where you can change the colors <laughs> of course you do romantic yeah so you know no not romantic i'll put like red lights on and then i'll play like dmx when i'm trying to like you know, when I'm benching or something, like I don't, I don't want like soft lavender lights. Like I want, <laughs> I'm listening to like Rough Riders an anthem, and like I'm trying to get in the mood to work out. Right? As your as as the video of Berlin is going by, I mean, you know, the treadmill is a warm up, right? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's for it's for cardiovascular health. Which, if you know me, yeah, you know me. So, like, yeah, um, I just. Kate and I, we've talked about this before where the the fitness from home thing kind of peaked and then they overexpanded. And then I still like working out in the gym. I don't know about you guys. Uh, I feel like this is it's just the peak. We had all that extra money that went into the system. We're stuck in the house. It was okay to spend... 2500 bucks on a bike i'm assuming 4000 on a treadmill and then at some point it's like i just want to go to soul cycle yeah you, it doesn't matter what you do in that video you're just never going to beat the in person experience i just think as as time has gone by i mean me personally i, I went on a pretty big health kick at the beginning of covid um and just over time just you know working out alone in the basement in the gym or even running outside by yourself like eventually like i i am I'm, I'm at that point where i'm like I, I need some motivation i need to be around people i need somebody like pushing me live or you know, vice versa like it's it could only take you so so far i mean unless you're i'm not saying that uh, there are folks out there that are really disciplined that can that can be in that environment and, and get themselves but I'm, I'm somebody that i just need to be around people to get some extra motivation i mean what do you do at this point like put a photo of rocky up in your in your gym you know try to get pumped up <laughs> it doesn't work it doesn't work what are you gonna do like watch rocky fight the russian yell yell go rocko and then you try to get pumped up and go beat on your speed bag and heavy bag. it doesn't work man have you ever got to work out at home like you did boxing at the gym, Dennis? No. I mean, I, I tried a, you know, the the boxing, the title boxing for a while. And, and the difference between doing that at the facility versus doing it in, in my bag at home is night and day. I, I got like one three-minute round in on my bag. And then I went and made a latte. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even making that up. Like, it's just, it's tough to get motivated at home. So, I, you know, Peloton's interesting because they are kind of, they're a manufacturer in a sense. I mean, or whatever, probably con contracting that out. But 
they're building the bikes, they're building the treadmills. They're they're also a digital content creator for the static videos they have in their library. And then obviously the live content they do. It's an interesting model. You know, it's it's a ma manufacturing slash kind of SaaS company all in one. But at some point, I think it's almost Tesla syndrome where you think everyone's going to drive a Tesla one day and that's not true. Where did you think everyone was going to end up with a Peloton in their basement? And I think you've seen about as many people that was going to get them as last year. So I, I don't know if raising prices is a good idea. I don't want to spend more than 40 bucks for something I don't even use now on the subscription base. I mean, the reoccurring revenue model's nice. You know, maybe it's uh, HP printer syndrome where they're breaking even on the hardware. I don't know. I just don't know where you go from here. 2020 was the best home fitness was ever going to see. Rogue was sold out of everything. Dennis, how long did it take you to try to find plates? Months. It was crazy. Six, nine months. Ten months. But that's it. Like we, At some point, probably next year, Whenever we feel we can go back in the gym safely and just who knows when this roller coaster of virus ends, but when it does, Craigslist will have so much gym equipment for sale it won't even be funny. <laughs> um, yeah, I just feel that you know the, the you know closing up Peloton stores is probably gonna is their first approach. A I'm I'm sure they're feeling it. I know we had the uh, another discussion about labor shortage and and such they're probably feeling that they're probably feeling the customers are not frequently visiting the stores as they used to before covid and that's probably you know paying um is becoming an issue with them and paying their 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 monthly rent or wherever they are you know i know we have a peloton store at a, a higher end mall uh by my house and i I can't imagine what they pay at rent there and how many people actually go into the store to purchase a Peloton versus online. <laughs> Maybe they're doing this. I mean, Kane, have you dug into them much? Uh, not so much. I mean, I, the, only on the hiring side, we know that they doubled headcount in, in one year based on 250% growth. So, you know, like uh, revenue growth. So you could see there that, you know, we, we've talked about this before, but companies that made big decisions in the in 2021 or 2020 based on what was happening in 2021 and 2020 you know you, you, you're gonna to assume that you're gonna have 250 percent growth forever means you're gonna take over the economy and it's just not reasonable so it, i feel like this was inevitable you know that's something for a lot of younger employees that are out there that are always looking for the new high tech company to go work at it's like Peloton just hired a bunch of people because they had a demand for it. And now they're like, well, our demand is no longer there as it was, you know, the last year and a half. So we're going to now fire everybody that wanted to join uh, Peloton because we're such a cool and techie company. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, there's so many businesses out there and manufacturers out there that are, have a healthy growth that do some exciting things as well. They're just not in, in the media as much as Peloton is. I mean, they're going to be cutting jobs. Call Have them call employment booths and start selling them that outplacement service package. <laughs> That's uh, for sure. But, you know, on the note of the, the stores, I guess, and maybe they're doing this, and I don't know because I care so little I didn't look. But if I'm going to spend the money on literally class A retail space, you know, especially in, I wouldn't do it in the mall, per se but for what it costs to be in a mall i could be class a anywhere on a road on a major road anywhere for what it costs to be in a mall i would have just started opening up my own spin studios with peloton equipment and that's how you would be able to come experience the hardware like why not make money on the retail side get people hooked on it you could do it at home. You could do it here. What if you could actually tune into a live stream from the Birmingham studio in Michigan and you're in Michigan? Do you not get more of a personal connection saying, Hey, I'm not streaming from some place in Brooklyn or wherever the hell they're doing it from. Imagine how you could suck in a local audience 
I, I would be more likely to tune into somebody that's from my own area doing instruction than I would somewhere else in the world. Yeah. But you could offset that cost of having the storefront, the class A retail space. People could experience your equipment. Like, you know, A, as a showroom and as a money generator, as a, as a fitness center. I just feel like there's so many more ways they could have executed this thing if they really wanted to get this beyond a cult following. Um, but that's me. I do things different. Well, I know, um, <clears throat> I can't remember if SoulCycle ended up making their own bikes as well. But, I mean, they are probably further ahead in that idea. I'm not quite sure what they're doing today, but, you know, they had those nice locations and in, in the major metropolitan areas. You know, I would say the quality of their bikes are probably close to being where Peloton is. Um, or competing with them. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic idea. Does anybody actually care about the bike? No, can you bought one. Do you care about the bike? Uh, no, nah, I, I wouldn't even, if you put me on two bikes, I wouldn't even be able to tell you the difference. So probably not. No. You were paying for essentially the SAS part of it. Uh, 100%. And then the brand. Yeah. That's just plain and simple. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, at that point, it's, you know, you bought a bike that you didn't like, you know, I rolled this bike. It's, it's got a 13 degree handlebar angle and uh, the seat gets my posture. Like, who the hell does that? No, the you seat is up, too hard. <laughs> no doubt. Right. Um, no one's going and buying those bikes for those reasons. It's one of those things that we know we're buying it for the experience and the service. And I think if you could do that through the uh, store, it'd be different. You know, hot tubs. You get, neither one of you probably bought a hot tub. When I bought a hot tub, the first thing they always try to get you to do is wet test. They want to get you in the hot tub. In the tub. store. In the store, they tell you to bring your bathing suit. You can jump in, try it out see where the jets are, this or that, because they know once they, once they get your ass in there, you're buying it. And I think if they could do that, and with the store, kind of like SoulCycle, they get you hooked on it. You know, Gorda, does anyone know what kind of bike SoulCycle used? No who, idea. Who cares? I'm not riding the tour, okay? It's, uh, it ain't happening. It's, it's a thing to pedal on, right? You're there for the instructor, for the music, for the people and the energy around you and all these things that are going on. Nobody cares about the bike. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's like one of the issues with, with uh, tech, but companies <laughs> in general nowadays is they try and fit into that model that it's like the Apple model, right? Like the, the Peloton showroom, like you said, James, and, and then it's like, it's almost pointless to have a showroom that you can't experience the, the product. Like every time I've gone past the Peloton store, it's always empty, but it's, be, I think it's because they try and mimic the Apple model which is the the showrooming kind of model and you see it with with like tech pitch decks you see with everybody tries to fit into this one little thing that's worked for the biggest company in the world and it, it doesn't need to be that way for every single kind of company and, and and i think it's the same with how companies have reacted to the last 24 months which is oh we're seeing a bit of growth we're going to hire like crazy because other people do that and and just not look at your own whatever it is balance sheet income statement and, and make proper decisions I mean, I did look at one and experiencing the hardware is what made me want to buy it. Now, would it have mattered if it was in a Dick Sporting Goods or a local, you know, fitness equipment reseller? It wouldn't matter where it's at. Mm -hmm. It's just one of I don't know if you need a whole store to do that. But my thought is if you're going to do a whole store, then just turn it into the whole experience. It's yeah. come down in and, and do a test ride with the group at, you know, four o'clock today. Um, but I, I like the local streaming aspect. Like if I could stream in to something local, it just feel like you're more a part of something. Um, I don't want to tune into New York with a bunch of people with like Yankee hats on and stuff. I'm in Detroit, man. What like that's not what I want. Yeah. Like I'm not really walking through Berlin. It's. <laughs> I'm trying to convince myself, like, what's it worth per each play? If I work out once a day and it's 40 bucks a month, I'm paying a dollar so I can visually walk through Berlin. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. 
I, I know other people use the classes and use all that stuff. It's just like I don't, I don't care. I need to ask the important question, which is: Did you wet test your your hot tub? Oh hell no! <laughs> <laughs> I, I always I thought it was. I thought it was strange. That, that sounds strange. And then I'm thinking, like, well, how many people have been like, go, and it's like a public hot tub, right? And how many people are in this thing? It's it's in a strip mall. It's just it's just, <laughs> it's just strange. It's oh, just... you got a wet test? I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> it's like, and then he thought, like, I'm the, I'm the crazy one. Like, you're gonna spend that much money and then not test it? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> As if like I've never been in hot tubs before, and uh, inter interesting sales experience. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the the uh, salesperson is going to join join you in the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they love uh, the wet test. Hey man, at that point, bring a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the story is this. Anyways, I mean, I'm not only thing. Man, management consultants crack me up because do they need to hire McKinsey to come in and say you hired too many people? Um, you took yeah. the words out of my mouth. I, I, it's it's crazy to me that they probably have so much, so many employees working at corporate. I'm sure they have a lot of smart people working uh, and leading these departments, and it's like they they quickly went and hired McKinsey to evaluate you know where they're losing money where they can earn more money and it's like don't you already have people doing this can you scroll down how many employees i got six thousand was the last number that i saw six thousand five hundred did to see how many people they hired or yeah they doubled in the last so there are six thousand seven hundred people as of june 30th and then that's double what it was last year more than double all right, all right so here's what you're gonna do at daggerfin you're going to call up Peloton, Kane. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to tell them, hey, you need to lay off 3,281 people. Yeah. And then yeah, send we... them and then send them the bill. Like, yeah. I don't, do you need McKinsey to come in and say you're overstaffed, you overexpanded, you're overstretched. The market is, you know, they're growing a little bit, but it's going to contract here in a minute. The market's saturated. There's more competition give me 10 million dollars <laughs> that's like it, it reminds me of like that tv show house of lies i told you guys to watch this is a book on it that originally started that series but like the management consultant stuff and i know many times they do earn their money but they kind of always come in and tell you everything you need to do that you already know and then like yeah. half the half the time you don't even take the advice that you already knew before they got there that was told to you again that you know you need to do but you don't do it and then you pay, and then you pay the bill. <laughs> so you, you, fire, you fire the thirty-two hundred people, and then you end up paying McKenzie whatever that bill is. It's just crazy. You know you're overstaffed, and you need to look at some different things in your business model. And uh, it's crazy. It's the answers as business operators are right in front of you often. But, uh, you know, it's going to be easier to say, well, McKinsey recommended we lay off 1,500 people and not us. Yep. And it's like, oh, I guess you got to put the blame on somebody. But, uh, I don't know. So this uh, episode did not inspire me to go work out on my Peloton today. Just <laughs> <laughs> You know, it did inspire me to go visit a Peloton store and see what the experience is. So I mean, I like the treadmill. I think I called Kane up one day and I was like, Complaining about the bike, and Kane's like, oh, "I I bought one of those." Yeah, and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because my complaint was, I like mountain biking, I like cycling, but to not have a bike, if I'm connected to this experience, let's say, to have a bike that doesn't auto tension, I'm riding up a hill, let's say, shouldn't the pedaling get tougher to match riding up a hill on a screen? <laughs> am i wrong Simple. no i remember the 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 one thing that it was you couldn't choose your music i remember you saying that like it, you're stuck to whatever they want to play you yeah well yeah like some kenny g type stuff and like <laughs> that's not a problem like, yeah, that's not a problem I, 
I'm over here with a state of trance 794 on right now. This ain't jiving. But what's it got? Like the little knob where you gotta like twist it the tension. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at this in the store and I go, How much you want for this bike? Like <laughs> it's literally like a huffy bike with a screen on it. And I gotta turn the tension it, and it's like two twenty five hundred bucks, three grand or something. I don't know. And you can't auto tension. I just felt like that would be a much better experience for people that want to cycle and get a good workout. Um, but I get it. Spin, you know, you should go as fast as you can. I just, what's the point of me watching a video of going up a mountain, for example, if the tension does? <laughs> and you're going downhill. Yeah. <laughs> so what? What is that? What would it cost to get that? Five thousand dollars? Dude, at this point, I'm gonna go to the store and buy a regular 10 speed bike. I'm gonna get one of those like roller things that you put the bike on so you can pedal inside the house yep. and put like a 50 inch L C D TV in front of me. Yeah. Um, and then watch football. I don't know. It's just craziness. But the good news is we did an episode earlier on McDonald's and I'm I'm definitely closer to getting McDonald's. <laughs> That I am getting on my belt right now. So like, maybe they'd get you on the treadmill more if the, the the screens were heading to the restaurant rather than through the Grand Canyon. I mean, that would be cool. All right, you, you got, you're running your way to a donut shop. That's hilarious. Hey, man, if if you got to the end of the goal and then a donut popped up out the machine, I work <laughs> every day. <laughs> <laughs> It might come true in the metaverse. Hey, anything's possible. Yeah. They'll like three three D print you a chicken sandwich or something. Like I know. World's changing. Anyways, yeah. that's all I got. I'll catch you guys. Okay.